Michelle friends, Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by today to see my other version of my Worthy Gig or a wind spinner. This is the one I made first. I made this for my daughter. She'll be home next weekend from school. I made this to match her dorm room because she's all totally yellow and silver. But as you can see, it is not all the same. It's skinny on the end, it's wider in the middle. It tapers on both ends. So this one is a little bit more involved. So I'm going to show you a truncated version, a little bit shorter than this, but I'll tell you how it goes along the way. Because this one takes a little bit longer time because we've got some big stitches going on in here and this ends up being a lot of stitches. So there's my gray and yellow. And here's one. This one is so cute. It's like St. Patrick's Day kind of colors. Just all kinds of shades of fun green and off yellow in there. A really fluorescent -y color. So I just love them. We're going to make a short version. So let's get started. We're going to start with yellow. I love this bright yellow. It's just called bright yellow, I think. Yep, bright yellow. Just love it. So for this one, for this teeny example that I'm showing you, I'm going to chain 20. However, for the big version, you chain 100. Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So there's our twenty. A little chain of twenty. Have your scissors handy. Every row has to start over again. That's the important part with making these little whirly gigs or a min spinner. Is that the right side is always the right side and the wrong side is always the wrong side. There is no chain one and turn in this project at all. So we're going to snip and pull, and there's row one. So again, if you were going to make a big one, that would be 100. So for the next round, we are going to fasten on at the end that we just finished on so everything's the right size, the right side, not the wrong side. And we're going to single crochet into every stitch. Every chain gets a single crochet. So every stitch will get a single crochet all the way down to the other end. And I'll meet you back down here when you have your 20 single crochets done. Alright, here's my last stitch. One more single crochet. I'll just pull that through, fasten off right now and pull through. And pull through. There's row two. So that's really simple. All right, for row three, we're going to change color. I'm going to change to the gray that I use on the outside of this. It's the same gray. It's kind of almost a silver. I like it. So we're going to start at the remember, right side up. That's the wrong side. This is the right side. I'm going to start in our very first stitch. Fasten on with our new color. Now at every stitch across with the gray is two double crochet in every stitch. So we've got one, two, three chains equals a double crochet in that first stitch and a double crochet again. So there's our two in that stitch. Two double crochets in every stitch all the way down and try to work over this tail if you can. It saves a little bit of needlework that you need to do later. So two double crochets in every stitch with the gray and I'll meet you back down here in just a second. Alright, here's the beginning of my curly cue. And now you're wondering why did you have so many stitch markers? I'm going to tell you why I have so many stitch markers. The reason or the way that this gets to be tapered is because not all the stitches are the same. So for the big one, Everything is in sets of 30, except for right in the center, it's a set of 20. So I will tell you all about that in just a moment. So what we're doing, I've marked off on the gray that I just finished. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my first six. On the big one, it would have been 30 with a chain of 100. This one is just marking off six because I'm making a tiny example. And again, I marked off six more. So these will all be single crochet. This will be half doubles. These will be double crochets. This little part right in the center is only a mark off of four. Everything else is a grouping of six. So six, 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 except for this little group right here is a section of four. That's what all you need to remember is that. So we are going to move on to our white. So I've marked these all off so I don't have to sit and count because that when if you're doing this one, uh, there's a lot of counting. I don't want to count to 300 over and over and over and over and over again. So we're going to start one, two, three, four, five and our top of our chain three from the previous round. Now fasten on. And in that stitch, we want two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And in the next stitch, it's the same thing, all the way up to and including that marker. Try to go over the tail. So one single crochet, two single crochet. There's our second stitch, here's our third. Here's our fourth with two singles. Here's my fifth. And here's my sixth, two single crochets. Now, so you never have to count again. We're going to move this stitch marker up there to this last white one that I just made. So now you know all of the stitches in front of and including that stitch marker are all single crochets. Doesn't matter how many there are anymore. Don't have to keep counting. So in this one I did all these were marked out in sixes with the four in the middle. If you were doing this one, it would be marked off at 30, 30, 30, 20, 30, 30, 30. It makes it way longer. All right, so our next sequence right here up to and including the next stitch marker is half double crochets. So two half double crochets in every stitch. One, two. And that's just a yarn over and pull through all three. Two in every stitch. So we included the stitch marker and now that we have two in that stitch we can move this marker over. So again, from here to the red, all half double crochets, you don't have to count anymore. So from here all the way over to this pink one, two double crochets in every stitch over to our next marker. And there we go, there's my two double crochets in the stitch that has my pink marker. So I'm going to take my pink marker out and put it in my last white stitch. Now I know everything between the red and the pink is double crochet. The very center, these four lonely little ones right here, these are triple crochets. So it's two yarn overs. Two yarn overs, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. 
two of those in each stitch over two and including the blue stitch marker. when I ended up with eight triple crochets. If you're making a huge one, 20 stitches, so you'd end up with 40. Because there's two in every stitch. There's my triple crochets. So I'm going to take my stitch marker and move it into the last triple crochet that I made in white. So again, everything in between here and the blue is triples. We don't have to count everything, which is very handy when you start making something that's as big as this one don't want to have to count to 120 every time when you get to the next round or anything. That's no fun. So now, since we went single, half double, double crochet, and triple crochet, now we're going to do the opposite. Going back down again, we're back down to double crochets. Two double crochet in each stitch, down to the next stitch marker. So that way it's tapered on both ends and it's kind of then it's fat in the middle. And here's my last set of doubles here. So now I just move my yellow stitch marker over to my last the last white one that I just made. So again, between here and here, I don't have to count them all. I love stitch markers. All right, the next one, you're gonna get, you guessed it, it is half double crochets, two in every stitch. all the way to our marker. Two half doubles in every stitch. And there's my marked stitch so it gets two half doubles. And now I'm going to move my stitch marker over to the last white stitch that I just made. Last set of six is two single crochets in every stitch. One, two. There we go. So now everything is marked off and ready for our next round. All we have to do is finish this part off. Just finish off our white. With a snip and a pull. And there that round is ready. That one's done and the next one is all lined up with your markers. So now that everything is marked, this should be pretty fast with our next round. And that was round one, two, this is round three, and this is round four. We are ready to go again. Here is the beginning. Remember these were all single crochets, half doubles, double crochet, triple in the very center, and then work backwards again with double, half doubles, and singles. You really do it in any sequence that you wanted to, to change the way that your you're where the gig tapers, but I did that in a set like that. Next round is yellow, because that very beginning one it just doesn't have very much yellow in it. And I really like this bright yellow, 
and that's what Color Lily's stuff is in her room at school. So I'm going to make this big one and then this little teeny one she can do with whatever she wants, probably hang it in her car somewhere. She has a Fiat and it's tiny so this little tiny thing probably would be super cute to have hanging from something. Alright, so our next round is we're going to fasten on down here on our white at the very beginning again. Remember the right side always has to be up and the, and the wrong side is always down. It's important for every row. I fasten on and two single crochets in every stitch. Down two and including the stitch marker. There's two. Basically a repeat of the same thing that we did in the previous round except now you're working into those additional stitches. So we don't have to count them. We're just going between between our markers. So those were all singles. Two in each stitch. This is a total of 12. If you were doing the big one, it would be a total of 60 stitches that you would be working into with two single crochets each. And remember you always include the last stitch is the one that has a marker in it. So I'm going to take our marker out and move it to the last yellow stitch that I just made. So again, I don't have to count anymore. So there you go. Repeat the sequence. Remember this was sing single crochet. This is half double crochet. This grouping is double crochet. The little one very center is triple, double, half double, and single. That is our same sequence. What we just did in round four is now what we're doing again in round five. We just have a few more stitches because we made everything bigger in the previous round. So I'll meet you at the end. And now I'm considering this, what I'm going to show you next, my last round. But if you wanted to make it a little bit wider, you do the exact same thing that you've done for the last two rounds up to your stitch markers. So single crochet up to the stitch marker. Don't have to count. Doesn't even matter how many there are. Half double crochets in between those two markers. Doubles, triples, doubles, half doubles, and singles. Half doubles and single crochets. You can do that if you want to. I'm considering this the end I'm going to stop now. This is going to be my last round. I'm going to do my finished edge. So we're just going to fasten on. And in that first stitch, I'm going to do a half double crochet. And in the next stitch, they're all exactly the same. Half double crochet all the way around. And that's my finishing edge and I will be done in a couple of minutes. So I don't need my stitch markers anymore because I am done making my increases of the tapers because this is my last row. So every time I come up with a stitch marker, I can take him out. Once you decide your piece is big enough, you don't need those markers anymore. And just do one round all the way around in half double crochets. It makes a really nice finished edge. Alright, so finished off my half double crochets all the way around and now I'm just going to spiral this up a little bit and we'll kind of flatten it out. I attached a top cord right here. You make this as long or as short as you want. It really doesn't matter. That's where it depends on where you want to put it. And you can use anything you want to. I'm just using some yarn that matches. But you could use anything you want. You see how this one is very small. Like this little guy. They're both very small. But they taper 
from small at the beginning, small at the end, but it's really big in the middle, and I think it just looks neat, and it's really fun when it spins. I find if we can get to a little bit of a breeze today, that would be awesome, but I'm not seeing a breeze. So the only other thing left to do is like with this original one that I have. Show this on my front camera. Is to attach the heart down at the bottom. And this is a different video to show you how to make a perfect three-dimensional heart. I just love this pattern. I have one tiny little piece left. I'm going to make it nice and short to show you how that works. Attach my big heart to the bottom of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through my heart, like that, right through the middle, and through the last stitch at the bottom, and pull my chain through. And it doesn't matter how many chains, you can make it as long or as short as you want. I wanted to make this one short because this whirly gig is really long already. So now we just want to tie these together using the tail ends, the short ends, not into the chain, but the tails. Get those as secure as you can and snip snip and now you just get to spin this part because it's going to live inside our 3D heart. We won't ever see him again. And now we have oh, she's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon. I've got some fun things coming up. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.